Hello, this is Mr. White, and this video is on Related Rates, Part 2. Here are the two exercises we'll be covering in this video. And let's get into the first one. A conical tank with the vertex pointing down is 10 feet across the top and 12 feet deep. If water is flowing into the tank at a rate of 10 cubic feet per minute, Find the rate of change of the depth of the water when the water is eight feet deep. Yes, it's a lot of words, I know. Uh, let's start with step one in our process. Uh, identify all the given quantities and the quantities to be determined and make a sketch and label the quantities as applicable. And it is definitely applicable here to, to draw a sketch. So step number one, I'm gonna start with the sketch. So here's our cone facing downward. And um, it is 10 feet across the top and 10 feet, um, 10, it is 10 feet across and 12 feet deep. So that is 10. Um, these are all given in feet. These units are all given in feet. So I'm just going to write 10 and understand that all my numbers here are given in feet. I'm sure some math teachers would frown on me for that, but I live life on the edge. Uh, water is flowing into the tank at a rate of 10 cubic feet per minute. So we've got water flowing into the tank. Now where should I draw that water? Should I draw it down here at this level? Or is it up this height or this height in the tank? We don't know. We want to, um, just, I'm just going to draw it at some representative height here. And understand that that's a varying quantity. That that height there, let's call that height H. Now you may be thinking, didn't they give us the height? Didn't they tell us the height here? Well, at a certain point in time, it's eight feet deep, and, and we want to answer the question at that point in time, but ultimately that height is changing at all times. Um, okay, so we're also supposed to uh, write, identify all the given quantities and quantities to be determined, so let's do that. Let's say that the, let's see, um, water is flowing into the tank at 10 cubic feet per minute. That is a rate, that is not saying that volume equals 10, it's saying that the rate of change of volume, dv over dt, how volume changes with time, is 10 feet cubed per minute. And notice that the units work out here. Units of volume are feet cubed, units of time are minutes. Okay, what else are we given here? Well, there is that, that number here that I alluded to, that the water is eight feet deep at a certain point in time. So the height is constantly changing, but, but um, at some point in time, the height is eight feet. And we're going to hold on to it. This is an important point. Um, I'll go ahead and mention it right now, that very often students want to just start plugging that in and working with that immediately. We're writing it down in step one, but we're not going to use that piece of information until the very last step, as you'll see. Okay, and finally, uh, we want to identify the quantity to be determined. We're asked to find the rate of change of the depth of the water. That's talking about this quantity H, right? So the rate of change of H is denoted by dH over dt. Okay, that is step one. Step number two says to write an equation involving the variables whose rates of change either are given or are to be determined. Let's scroll down a little bit here. So we look and see where the rates of change are. Here's a rate of change, here's a rate of change, and we need an equation that relates B and H. Now it's not a calculus equation at this point. Step two is never a calculus equation. It's typically a geometry. Um, so, what is the relationship between B, volume, and H, height there? Well, that's something where if you know it, great. I'll admit it, it's, it's typically going to be given to you in a calculus problem, although it's not a bad one for you to know. The volume of a cone, so step number two is where we write down that the volume of a cone is one-third pi r squared h. Again, you'll usually be given that, but not a bad one to know. Now notice that there's another variable in there. We wanted an equation that related V and H, and really only V and H. 
But notice that there's an R in there. So our goal is, let's not consider ourselves done with step two until we get V in terms of just H alone. Now, how are we going to do that? Let's look at the geometry. Let's look at our sketch and identify where is R in this picture. Um, R, remember, we're talking about the volume of this cone-shaped uh, um, mass of water here. So R is not the radius of the entire tank. The R we're referring to here is just this value right here, this R. The radius of the, the top um, surface of the, of the water there. And what's, notice that R and H are not um, independent of each other. Notice that as H grows, R will grow proportionally. Um, if H were smaller, R would be proportionally smaller. So let's write a proportion there that relates R and H. Um, notice that this height over this radius is going to equal this height, the total height of the tank over the total radius of the tank. Okay, so the height of the water over the radius of the water equals the height of the tank over the radius of the tank. And let's make sure we don't put 10, let's put 5. That would, since 10 is the diameter. Okay, and notice that now we can get uh, uh, H in terms of R or R in terms of H. Uh, remember what our goal is? We want to have just H's over here. So that means that we want to take this equation and get R by itself. And notice I can pretty easily rearrange that. Let's see, that would give us R equals um, 5 twelfths H. And now what that allows us to do here in step two, let's scroll down a little bit, is to substitute in. Again, I'm going to substitute in for R, I'm going to substitute in that 5 twelfths H. And that's going to give me B equals one-third pi times five-twelfths H squared times H. And let's simplify that. Let's see, this five squared will give us a 25 up top along with the pi. And then three times 12 squared, three times 144, will give us 432. Can't reduce that fraction. Um, and then we've got an h squared times an h, and that's going to give us h cubed. So now we have our volume entirely in terms of h. And I'll remind you again that we knew to do that because volume and height, or depth, were the two variables involved in those rates in step number one. OK, step number three. Use the chain rule, implicitly di differentiate both sides of that equation from step two with respect to time. So let's scroll down a little bit here. Uh, copy this and this down. And step three is where we do d over dt with respect to time of both sides. All right, and that is going to give us dv over dt on the left equals, and we differentiate here, rather than multiply the top times this 3, I'm going to divide the bottom by 3. And again, I hope you're comfortable enough with your fraction operations to, to, um, to be uh, cool with that. So 25 over 144. So that's my reduced fraction. And then I've got h squared. And then, um, since this is a different variable, dh over dt. That is step number three. And finally, step number four, substitute in um, to the resulting equation all the known values for the variables and their rates of change. Solve for the one that you want. So let's uh, uh, look back at step one. And remember that back in step one, we said that dv over dt was 10. 10 cubic feet per minute. So we'll substitute it in for dv over dt, 10 feet cubed per minute. Uh, we have that 25 pi over 144. And h, 
Now is where we'll use that h value of 8 feet. That's going to be squared. dh over dt is the very thing that we are trying to find. So we'll just write dh over dt. And let's solve for dh over dt. So let's put, I'm going to put the dh over dt on the left side. And then I'm going to say that that is, I'll put the 10 feet cubed per minute on the right side. And again, I'll, I'll handle all this. I'll move this over to the appropriate side. So the 25 pi over 144 becomes 144 over 25 pi. And then that 8 feet in qu uh, quantity squared, that's going to end up in a denominator since I've moved it to the opposite side. So that's going to, let's put 1 over. And let's go ahead and distribute that out. Instead of 8 feet quantity squared, let's write 64 feet squared. And if I do the 10 times 144, that'll give me 144. 0, and then 25 times 64, that'll give me 1,600. And there's a pi on the bottom, too. Let's not forget that. There's a pi on the bottom, and our units are feet cubed divided by feet squared. That's going to give us just feet on top. And on the bottom, we'll have minutes. Feet per minute. That's actually appropriate, isn't it? That's how fast the depth is changing, or the height is changing, feet per minute. That's the units of height in feet, time in minutes. So that all makes sense. The units all work out. And if I reduce that fraction, I will get 9 over 10 pi feet per minute. That is how fast the, the depth of the water is changing at that point in time specified. OK. That was fun. Let's go on to the next one. We have a 20 foot long trough that has a trapezoidal cross section and it's 14 feet across at the top, 8 feet across at the bottom. The non parallel sides of the trapezoid each measure 5 feet um, and water is rising at a rate of 1 half foot per minute when the water level is 1 foot deep. Determine the rate at which water is being pumped into the trough. That's a lot of information. I don't totally blame you if you're a little bit intimidated. Let's just go through step by step and break this down. Identify the quantities, the given quantities, and the quantities to be determined, and make a sketch and label the quantities as applicable. And I often find that in the process of making a sketch and figuring this out, what initially was a really foggy picture starts to become clear. So hopefully you'll get that sort of sensation as well. All right, so what are we dealing with here? A 20 foot long trough with a trapezoidal cross section. Okay, let's draw that cross section here. Here's our trapezoid. And it's 20 feet long. So I'd say that's 20 feet into the page. Um, if you want to just keep that in your head, you may. Or if you want to try to draw sort of a 3D representation of it, that's fine too. Something like that. Okay. Um, and then not my best artwork there, but you get the idea. Um, and it's, this, this trough is 14 feet across at the top, 8 feet across at the bottom, and has the, the, the non-parallel sides are 5 feet. So let's start labeling that. These two sides are 5 feet. So 5 and 5. And again, I'm gonna, since all these units are given in feet, I'm just going to put the numbers and trust that every number on here is in feet. The bottom is 8 feet across, so that's this length right here, that's 8 feet across. And the top is 14, but, but when, you get a, 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 when you start getting a little experience with this, you kind of anticipate what you're going to want to do or what's going to help you in the future. I'm going to get the sense that maybe dividing this up as such will be appropriate. And so then, rather than thinking of it as 14 feet across, I'm going to break that into three sections. And I'm going to say the middle one is clearly 8 feet, right? So the middle one is 8 feet. But then that means that, of the, that I have 6 feet left if there's 14 feet total. So that means that this one and this one must be 3 feet each. So let's put 3 and 3 there. 
And I ask you, what's the height of this trough? It wasn't told to us, but can you look at the information we have now and figure out what the height is? I draw your attention to this right triangle and that the fact that we've got a five hypotenuse and a three leg. Those numbers are chosen very conveniently, weren't they? Such that we know that this is a three, four, five right triangle. So I know that the height of the trough is four feet. That's a big trough, wow. Um, okay, so what else do we need to draw on here? The, the drawing's getting a little bit messy, but I'll draw some water in there anyway. And again, at some arbitrary height there. So here's the, here's the water. Um, again, it's filling up this, the bottom of the trough here. And let's call that height H. And again, this is really messy. I'm probably going to end up just drawing another little picture that simplifies this a little bit. But I'll move forward here. That's H. Okay, so what uh, are, else are we given? What should we write down? What are we asked to find here? Uh, let's see. Um, some of this given information is, is, is labeled on the sketch, so I won't repeat it off to the side, but I do need to re uh, document that the water is rising at a half foot per minute. Notice in the last exercise we're given a volume rate, we're given uh, 10 cubic feet per minute. Here we're given the, um, that the height is changing a half foot per minute. So we're told what rate that H is changing. So dH over dt. And again, the units are a clue. This is not cubic feet per minute. This is just feet per minute. So it's dH over dt. That is one half foot per minute. All right. Um, the water level, we, we're asked to find the, um, to answer a question when the water level is one foot deep. So again, at some point in time, h equals one foot. We'll save that for step number four to actually plug it into something. And then what are we being asked? The rate at which water is being pumped into the trough. And it's just, it, it's implied through the context of this problem that we're looking for the volumetric rate. The rate at which water is being pumped in the trough. We want to know how many cubic feet per minute. So that's a change in volume. And again, this is where you have to use a little bit of intelligence. Um, you can't look for everything to be um, totally spelled out for you here you have to infer that we are being asked to find the change in volume with respect to time. Okay? So there is step one. Okay, so step two says to write an equation involving the variables whose rates of change either are given or to be determined. So let's go back over here. And we need an equation that relates this variable to this variable. Those are the two rates involved. We need a vari uh, an equation that relates V and H. This feels kind of similar to the last problem, doesn't it? So since this picture up top is getting a little bit messy, for step two, I'm going to, to bring this down. I'm going to copy that down. And let's focus on just the water itself. OK, let's think of what's going on with that water. Um, the bottom there is definitely eight. Definitely eight feet. Um, think that even as the water fills up that, that trough, even as the water um, gets deeper and deeper here, and I'm probably just making that a big mess there, huh? Um, notice that the bottom stays eight feet, whereas that top is going to grow. It's going to get longer and longer as the water level rises, right? I hope that was clear. So I can label the bottom eight, but I don't want, I have to be careful on how I label the top. Um, Let's remind ourselves of this value here. That was h. So we know that that height is h. So let's put a little line there and say that that's h. Um, what about this length right here? Hmm. Let's take a look at the trough itself again. And we see that there's some similarity going on, some proportionality going on there. Remember how on the trough itself that we had a 3, 4, 5 right triangle in there? that this height was four and this distance was three. Okay, wouldn't you agree that the, um, that the similar triangle down there with the water needs to be proportional? This height and that distance there it needs to be proportional to that four and three that we saw on the trough itself. So if you agree that this three is three-fourths of this height right there, 
then let's extend that and say that this distance down here is going to be three-fourths of this height. Okay? So that distance is going to be three-fourths h. And you can for, um, you know, set up a, a formal proportion if you want, but I hope that reasoning made sense, that if that 3 is 3 fourths of this 4, this quantity had to be 3 fourths of this quantity. Okay, uh, clearly it's going to be the same over here. That's also 3 fourths h. Um, this distance in the middle is still going to be 8. So let's think of how we're going to find the volume of this water. Something that you should know is that volume is simply the area of this trapezoid, volume of this shape is going to be the area of this trapezoid times that 20 foot depth into the page, that 20 foot length into the page, okay? So let's focus first on finding the area of this trapezoid and then we're going to multiply by the 20 feet into the page. Okay, um, there's several ways you could do this. I'm going to just use the trapezoid area uh, equation. So area of a trapezoid, you may recall, is the height divided by 2 times base 1 plus base 2. Now again, that's area, and if I really want the volume, I need to multiply times that 20 into the page. And these are all in units of feet, of course. That's what's going to give me the volume. Okay, so what are B1 and B2 in this case? Well, base 1 is this base of the trapezoid. And base 2 is that total distance. So let's plug that in. h over 2 times 8, that was the b1. And then the b2 is going to be another 8 plus 3 fourths h and another 3 fourths h. That'll give me 3 halves h. Quantity times 20. And if your head is swimming a little bit right now, we're, we're getting through the worst of it here. And after this step, I think it'll, it'll be easier. So hang in there. That is the volume of the water. Let's simplify that. Um, 8 plus 8 gives us the 16. Um, plus 3 halves h. Uh, let's go ahead and multiply 10, I'm sorry, 20 times h over 2. That will give us 10 h. And then if we distribute that, which I do think is beneficial to do in this case, we'll get 160 h plus, uh, let's see, 15 h squared. That is the volume of the water. We have completed step two. We've got an equation that relates volume in terms of variable h. Okay, step three. That's the one that said to use the, use the chain rule to implicitly differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to time t. So let's do that for step three. So on the left hand side we'll have dv over dt. We've differentiated with respect to time. And on the right hand side and just a formality, let's go ahead and do this again like I normally do. d over dt of both sides. I'll get 160. I'm going through this a little bit more quickly. I hope you're starting to get the hang of this. dt. And if I differentiate the 15h squared, I'm going to get 30h dh over dt. That was step three. Finally, step four, if you recall, is where we just plug everything in. Substitute in all those values that we had way back in step one into this latest equation. So if you recall, back in step one, we said that h was going to be one foot. That's the time we're, or, or that's when we're interested in. That's the h value we're interested in. And dh over dt is a constant one half, but per minute. So we're going to plug those in now. And step four is where we plug those all in and we get dv over dt, that's the thing we're solving for, equals 160 times dh over dt, which is the one half foot per minute. Plus 30 times h, where h was one foot 
times dH over dt, one half foot per minute. Now, I have to admit, my units, I, I've been a little bit sloppy with the units, I'm noticing now. Um, if you're looking at and noticing that the units aren't really working out, it's because early on, what I really should have done, and I'll admit I'm sometimes a little sloppy about this, is way back earlier, when we put uh, 20 here, I really should have put 20 feet. And I really should have put 8 feet and 8 feet here. And if I had really followed that all the way through and, and been consistent with that, what I would have ended up with down here is that this would be 160 feet squared if I followed that all the way through. And this would have been 30 feet. So the units do, do work out. I was just being sloppy, but rather than redo the whole video, I'm just going to finish it off here. So we get dv over dt. Uh, 160 times 1 half will give us 80 feet cubed per minute plus 30 times 1 times 1 half would give us 15 feet cubed per minute. How fast is the water being pumped into that tank? dV over dt equals 95 feet cubed per minute. Final answer.